host. I'm only using the one fucking tool. Today's episode is made possible entirely through the support of Stevie G. Turan and all of you people on Patreon. Thank you guys for helping out. Check out the links below in the description to see how you can get involved. Thanks. Hi there, guys. Welcome to today's Equipment Autopsy, where we're going to be taking apart this beautiful state-of-the-art Asus EPC. EPC. It's the Seashell series right there. And uh, I've had a couple of these knocking around for years and they're cool, but they're nutless. This only has a gig of RAM in it. I think it maxes out at two. And for what I wanted to do for it, it wouldn't work. I looked them up online and they're not really worth squat. So I figured we'd have more fun taking one apart. This is a perfectly functional computer. It just isn't functional for anything that I have going on in my life. And I couldn't even use it as an SDR and the battery is completely pooched. So we're just gonna pop the battery right out. Ooh, she's in there. there we go. I'm gonna pop the battery right out. Maybe I'll autopsy a battery on one of these too. One of these. I've, I've had experiences with batteries in my videos in the past. So look at some of the old Cayenne Mountain videos and you'll see why I don't jump at the opportunity to autopsy batteries. But let's, as we do this, save the parts that might be useful for something else. My original intention for this was to have a computer that I could use in lieu of a Raspberry Pi to uh, drive an SDR out on my radio tower and just do like ADSB scanning or like fire and emergency scanning or something like that. Just, just basic stuff. And this thing did not have the stones to do that. And now you can buy a Raspberry Pi for like 50 bucks and get the, the Pi 4 with four gigs of RAM. This has one gig, let's take a look here, of PC3. That's, that's your high power, high class memory there. Wow, all right. That's gonna be a keychain somewhere. Now, how do we get into it? My goal is to not have to use any more tools than just this. So I don't see any way in the front. Sometimes there's a bezel. Yeah, there's a bezel there, but I'm gonna see if we can get in through the back. Now on the back, what I do see is, let me get you down to where you can see it. It's got lurfs. And where there are lurfs, especially since there's only two of them on here. Oh no, it's got lurfs in the back. All right, we're gonna take all the lurfs off and see if there's screws hidden underneath them because I'll bet there might be. Why do I gotta say things like that? I say things like that and then no way in. Let's try, oh, there's screws back here though. I'm gonna take off this lurf though and see if that gets us anything. Because lurfs are very frequently used to hide screws and that may or may not be a screw, I'm not 100%. I'm gonna take out all the other screws though and see what that gets me. Now I know there's somebody commenting right now is like, oh my God, you're showing your Windows key. Yes, yes, I'm showing my Windows key right there. There's my Windows key for Windows 7 starter. And if you wanna steal my Windows key, you knock yourself right out. Is that broken off? That's either broken off or that's the shortest damn screw I've ever seen. Look at that. That's got like two threads on it. I think it's broken off. I would, well, let me, let me check here. I don't think those are broken off. I think those, I'm almost certain with a whole four data points in my study because all four of those screws are the same size 
and the same length. And they're all like a millimeter long. Those are really weird screws. We'll set those aside. All right, will that let me open this yet? Because that's only screws in the back. There's nothing in the front. I do like this. This is clever and I, I appreciate clever. Look at the ethernet port. It's got like a little rawr, rawr. I like the little fold up ethernet port. That's neat. Yeah, I think this whole damn thing just clips together aside from a few screws. Let's see if I can get in the bezel. It's one of those words that I learned wrong because I learned it by reading it. And for years, I pronounced it bezel. I always thought it was a bezel. It's not, everybody says it bezel. Oh. Oh yeah, this is, this is the delicate, gentle, proper way to go into this. Just, why, why am I being delicate? We're, we're not using this anymore. Because maybe somebody's watching this and they're trying to fix theirs. So that takes a keyboard off. It's a really nice keyboard. I like the keyboard on it. No, oh, we got a sticker. Warranty void if seal broken or removed. Fuck <laughs> you. Okay, so I know that screw is important to take things apart. I'm just going to take out all the screws I can find. These are, it says M2 by L6. So that'll mean they're six millimeters long. I'm just going to take out every screw I can see. Oh, that's... That's too tiny. I got to step up a size. I'm a screwdriver here. I'm using a Phillips zero. That definitely did it. I'm just going to work my way around. So far, I am successful on using only one tool to take this whole thing apart. I like my little Klein screwdriver. Okay, give her a little bump and a shake, and it snows more screws. I got a bunch of little screws out of that. That's cool. I'm keeping those. I keep hardware because screws are expensive, and I tend to need them in all different sizes. Can I get you apart? The front is different. But with a little leverage. Oh yeah, there you go. Hi, how you doing? Welcome to the party, pal! Oh, I missed one. It's that warranty void one. That's, that's the most important one. And there was one hiding down here by a fan. Okay, that should get me Oh yeah, we're, we're in. All right, so we've got a touchpad on here. Whew, that's a sound. That sound tasted like burning. All right, let's check out our touchpad and see what we got. We got several more screws and a bracket. Now this is made out of plastic, but it's a metalized plastic. You can see 
the colors here where it's got that metallic coppery color, this isn't made out of metal, this is just plastic. But what they do is they spray the plastic with a metallized coating and it helps with EMI shielding, electromagnetic interference shielding or RFI, radio frequency interference. Um, basically, everything inside here works up in the megahertz and the gigahertz and there's a lot of radio noise. So for them to get legal in selling them and making them, they have to do everything they can to reduce the amount of noise that it makes. Now this is neat. This is all one piece of plastic until here. The button is a different piece of plastic. This is all one piece of plastic through here and the button is a different piece. And on the back, it's a totally different thing. Like there's a sensor for the touchpad on the back. I'm gonna see if I can get it off. Cause I'm curious. Are you gonna come off of there? It doesn't look like fasteners. It looks like it's heat welded on. All right, we're gonna have to get a little violent. And if I'm gonna be levering on little tiny pieces of plastic. Now this gives us some information on it. 2009-12-302-201 revision B. So that's what we're looking at. Maybe you can get some good information off that. I'm just gonna try and lever it off the damn board. And it's held in place with those on like a melted welded pins, but they come right off. Now will that, that really just gets me the pretty pieces, the chromed pieces. I want this. I want to touch your poozle. It's quite flexible too, but I don't think, let's just get that right out of there. We don't need that. We'll take this side off too. Don't need that. And then we'll take that off. Just keep breaking pieces off. I might get down to something that I care about. All right, so that's strong enough to lever against. This is really very well bonded in here. I think it's glued right to it. It's all bonded together. I think it's just a capacitive touch pad just from the looks of it. I got I'd have to think it's capacitive and it's on there. That is not worth any more time than that. Let's get back into the main event and see what we can find. So the, right off the hop, I can see right here, 250 gig hard drive. Now it's, it's not like an SSD, it's not a really good drive, but it's a drive. So it's worth saving, it's worth keeping, those aren't. So we're gonna take the hard drive out of it. Oh. While I'm popping bezels, let's see if I can get this off. Oh, I don't want to have to get a different tool. I'm on a one tool mission. So I'm going down to the really tiny flathead screwdriver. Let's see if I can wedge that in there. Oh, 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 come on. Come, oh yeah. Ah, oh yes, like a man. All right, now we're in. Now I feel better. Feels good, bro. Okay, I'm gonna take the screen out. I'm trying to get the, the backside stuff out because it's, the weight is causing it to tip forward. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to use this screen for anything. I might. 
So I'm gonna try and bring the screen out as intact as possible because I might be able to wire this up to like a Raspberry Pi or something like that, which would be pretty cool. I don't think you can output to a screen directly from an Arduino. They probably have a shield for that. I don't know. I haven't messed with that enough to know. Comment in and let me know. How many, can, can you interface an LCD screen directly to an Arduino? Are there shields for this? Do you have recommendations? And how can I interface this screen to a Raspberry Pi? Because the screen doesn't suck. There's not, it's not like a fancy touch screen or anything cool like that, but it doesn't suck. And if I can pull it out reasonably intact, we'll be able to see what the interface is. It's just one, one cable. I got a wire that goes up here. Those are just antennas, so we don't really care about that. And that's the thing up to the camera. So this is just an antenna. This is the other antenna. Those are gonna be the Wi-Fi antennas. And then there's a big fat cable that goes up to the little camera board, which is not coming off without a fight. So let's give her a fight. All right, camera board came off. Don't care about the antennas. We can get rid of that. So now we're back to Phillips. And let's get the hard drive out. This is just your standard laptop form factor hard drive. Which way do you want to move? It probably wants to slide, because I can see the plug on this end, so it probably wants to slide. Oh, no, I got another screw hiding down there. So now it should slide. There, yeah, nice and easy, nothing to it. When adding, or when, when inserting or removing hard drives, and most computer components, if you have to force it at all, you're probably doing it wrong. And if you want to see the many ways to do it wrong, just watch my videos. I'm, I'm here to teach. So we got, what will this tell us about its history? 250 gig Seagate Momentus. Probably, it says 5400.6, so it's probably a 5400 RPM, maybe? Date, 11-127, so 127th day of 2011. Maybe? I don't know. I don't know the date codes on, on Seagate. But I'll bet one of my cool viewers will be able to tell me like the moment and factory this was made. Hell, knowing my viewers, somebody can probably be like, yeah, that was made by Zhao. He's a cool dude. He works second shift. And uh, when he's not at the factory, he likes to play with model trains and go fishing. You know, Because I, mean. I get comments like that. and. Frequently, they're right. It's kind of weird. By the way, if you liked the little screwdriver I'm using here, um, I did a video on it. It's kind of cool. And you can get it easily in my Amazon store and help support the show. So I'm just working my way around the board, taking out screws. The construction on this is really simple, but you can tell that a lot of really smart engineers had to do a lot of very complicated stuff to make the assembly of this that simple, which is pretty cool. I, I appreciate good product design engineering. And despite the fact that this little thing was super underpowered and really weedly, like it would have been a lot better if I could have stuck like 16 or even eight gig of RAM into it, it would have been a much happier machine. Okay, so that comes off to just a ribbon connector. I'll show you here. That's the, the connector for the monitor. And on the board, 
it goes right here in the 0941 connector. It's uh, LVDS is what it's labeled. So that's, that's the connector I need to be able to interface that screen to a Raspberry Pi. And I'll bet somewhere somebody makes an adapter. So this, we'll come back to you. This is our processor heat sink. And you take off those two screws that you can see and that just comes right off. And there's our CPU and something else, SV1. I'm guessing graphics, maybe? Like it's probably not a math coprocessor, which would be way cool. Um, I think those have been integrated for, oh, ever now. What was the last processor that had a separate math coprocessor? Because they used to be like one number off, like you'd have the 386 and then the 387 math co. What was the last processor to, to not have that as an on die feature? So this is neat. I've got pretty much the whole damn computer right here. And that's all the bigger it is. And if they can make them that small, why isn't Asus making its own version of the Raspberry Pi? And do they? Do they have a little tiny single module computer like the Pi? Does Asus make something like this? I wouldn't be surprised if they did. So I've got, that's probably the Wi-Fi module because I just unplugged two antennas off it. Let's get a look. Yep, 802.11bgn and 802.15bt. Does that mean Bluetooth? Might be both. Huh, that's cool. There's all your numbers and you can see the two antenna connectors. I wonder if that standard card will fit in other things because I'm sure I have a couple old laptops with a socket like that that don't have Bluetooth. So we come around to this, which is just our, basically it's all IO. We've got audio here, some USB. Um, I don't know what that is maybe half of an HDMI connector. And then we've got a memory card over here. What the hell are you? I feel like I should know that. Oh, that's the top of the ethernet connector. It's a totally separate thing. Cause remember how it's got the little mouse thing? And then it's got the feed off to the, the little webcam. So yeah. And that concludes our autopsy of the little Asus. So what do we have that we're keeping that's where I might, I might dig into the battery later. I'm not going to do that right now. And I'm certain, well, because batteries are dangerous and I probably shouldn't just open this up without having a better complement of tools at hand because you can hurt yourself there. You certainly don't want to go digging into a battery with just a tiny stabity little screwdriver because that's how you set things on fire on set with everybody watching and the internet has to go and make you its bitch for a while. And I haven't had that happen in like a year. I haven't really set anything on fire on camera in a couple of years. So I'm feeling lucky. Let's, let's take a look in here. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, there's so much adhesive and clips and these are not designed like they're like, oh yeah, it's designed to be recycled. They're really not designed to be recycled by anybody except a dude who does only that all day long and has like a whole host. I'm only using the one fucking tool, a whole host of tools to do this. And I have a screwdriver. And when all you have is a screwdriver, then you're probably just gonna get screwed. Okay, so we've got six cells. They're Samsung's. They're probably, yeah, they're just 18650s. Oh, fuck. Okay, that hurt.
so much adhesive. Okay, so oh, I need you. So I'm gonna take the screwdriver bit right out of it and just lever that. Ah, come on, yeah. Get some, bro. It's like that. I'm hardcore, you can tell. I'm a rugged man of the sea. <laughs> so we've got really not a lot. There's gonna be, there's gotta be a little, I gotta think there's some kind of card in there. But what I have here, uh, uh, is a handful of 18650s. Come on out, there you go, okay. Huh. All right, so we've got some individual 18650 cells. These are ICR 18650s 28As, Samsung SDI 2 Alpha 72. And I got, I got half a dozen of them here. So we'll throw a voltmeter on these and see if they're worth a damn, but given that the computer wouldn't even boot and that I had it plugged in for like six hours yesterday, it'll run off a power supply, but it won't run off battery. Now it might be that just one of these are pooched. It might be that these are all just old and dead. Um, I don't know how to work out the date of manufacture on, but they've got a sticker. Does that mean anything to you? Maybe we can find out how old they are, but they're a, they're a fabulous lavender color Samsung cell. And we got some other crap that we don't care about. And I got a whole bunch of little microscopic screws that I'm just gonna toss in a jar. And uh, yeah, I don't care about that either. Or that, never gonna use the camera. So we got a couple little tiny hinges and a pile of screws. And I've got a really cool screen. And if I'm lucky, one of you guys is gonna be able to help me interface this screen to a Raspberry Pi. Now I'm gonna give you the data on the back of the screen. There's the number. It's made by Hanstar. And there's the other big thing on the back. So with that piece of data and that piece of data, perhaps one of you guys can help me interface this screen, and it'd be really cool because I have never done that. I've never taken a laptop or a netbook computer or something like that apart and been able to reuse the screen. But now we live in the future and I might be able to do this and that'd be really awesome. So thank you for hanging out for today's one tool equipment autopsy. Done in one with my little Klein 32614 screwdriver. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. And as always, we'll see you next time.